Unicode operating system. So usually they'll put some sort of uh, Ubuntu distribution or some sort of very simple clean uh, distribution. They usually always run it with a graphics mode uh, enabled. So you have access to an IDE uh, and you have access to some debugging tools, but realistically, if you're if you're developing complex code with an IDE, you're doing something wrong. You really should be aiming for a simple, clean, tight code. For local competitions, it's highly recommended you bring books and any sort of documentation you need. Though this is a big note, in world's competition at the international level, you are not allowed to bring any tools with you other than pen, paper, and your own bodies. So the problem itself, uh, the problem format for each individual problem is relatively simple. No matter what the problem is, you will always have a title, description, some sort of graphics to maybe help explain input or output, uh, an explanation of what are the inputs and outputs, as well as a very simple or sometimes very mischievous uh, input and output example. Uh, <laughs> We'll be talking about that in the next video, because uh, I've got some interesting stories involved with um, malicious input and output. What you should always be paying attention for at this point when you're reading through the problem is any sort of unintentional or maybe some sort of missing information. Uh, the problems never go out of their way to be misleading on purpose, but there's plenty of times and plenty of cases where the information is unintentionally misleading. Uh, the problem that we'll be talking about and doing together is called the 3n plus 1 case. Uh, the documentation never explains what happens if you swap the two input variables, but there actually is a predefined behavior you should be programming towards. Also, there might be, and it's very rare, there might be some errors in the examples. Don't be afraid to ask the judge or those that are advising the competition for help and clarity. You never lose any points. The only negative part about this is sometimes they take a while to respond to your questions. So set yourself up where you're working on another problem while you're waiting for a question to be answered. Now, I told you before that the judge is great in the sense that it outputs several different variables telling you whether you succeeded or you got wrong. And with this, it really helps you optimize your time. So specifically, the judge returns, and I believe it's seven types of return types. There's the correct answer, it just returns correct. There's the wrong answer, the, the information that you generated is incorrect. And the next few are really, really helpful. Output format error simply means that you might have the right solution, but somehow you misformatted, misformatted the output. Uh, excessive output, you have the right solution, but you wrote more than you should have. Compilation, obvious, if your code doesn't compile server-side, it'll give you this error. Runtime error, simple things like out-of-bounds access or divided by zero, or time limit exceeded. This is something you'll see more often than anything else, because all of these other problems can be checked by you. Time limit exceeded is extremely frustrating to deal with. I'll be giving you some tips uh, in a minute about how to manage all of your times and resources, as well as deal with those specific issues. But basically, if you want to win, all you have to do is pace yourself. Sit down and read and understand your problem case. You're given several problems, and you also have two coworkers with you, your co-teammates. What you should be doing is read each one together and mark it on a scale of one to three on how difficult it is. Since the competition is more about solving quantity versus quality, try to solve the simplest ones first. The reason why you don't want individual members to read individual problems is sometimes one member might misunderstand a problem and think it's much easier than it is. Or, in the other case, someone might read a problem by themselves and find out that it's actually much harder than it is. Or much easier, whatever the case is. Uh, also, try to quickly identify what the problem type is. Uh, there's a nice set of problem types that I've commonly found within the ACM format that we'll be talking about in the next slide, and I'll go over each of those. Um, but try to connect what you're reading with something that you've had experience with, and more often than not, you will find that there's some sort of basic pattern or basic algorithm that you just have to slightly modify or grow on. It's extremely rare that you have to create a new algorithm to solve your problem. If you do, all you have to be careful about is the big O complexity ask yourself, is my solution n squared? Is it unreasonably complex, like n to the n? Uh, can I optimize it by using a binary tree? What is that? n log n, etc. And also, try to solve some of your problems by hand. 
Uh, stepping through your code with a debugger is helpful, but honestly you save more time by doing the own computation in your head. Uh, if you're manipulating a complex data structure, such as if you have to iterate through a binary tree, then it does make sense to use a debugger and actually use the computer. But remember, every minute that you spend debugging code is a minute that you're losing writing code. And since this is all about writing as fast and as much as you can, uh, it's a double loss. Also, of course, work with your partners. Try not to split your work too much. Uh, a good balance I found was two people should be coding while one person is developing the next solution. Uh, it sounds very biased. It sounds like it's not a fair balance because two people writing code with one computer doesn't make any sense, while only one person working on an algorithm seems to be not spending enough time on it. But actually, in reality, two people on the computer saves a ton of time with compiler and runtime mistakes. Tracking down a subtle error like a, an off-by-one index array uh, glitch is extremely difficult unless you catch it early on. Save yourself the time. It's all about pumping out as many solutions as possible. And one person on an algorithm at a time might seem small, but realistically algorithms are easy to solve when you're just by yourself and you pace yourself. These teammates should be talking with each other. It's very important to bounce uh, ideas off one another. Um, but really, find the balance that works for your team. I strongly recommend two programmers, one algorithmist. Depending on your school and your background, maybe you could find something else. Uh, and really, one of the biggest suggestions I hate to have is program in C. Don't program in Java. You're adding much more complexity and bloatedness to your code than you need. Don't program in C++. It doesn't offer any special features that you'll actually need. Uh, never, ever, ever, ever write any sort of object-oriented code apart from something basic like a very simple structure. Stick with C. It's clean. It's elegant. It's fast. And always test your code before you submit it. Also, like I warned you in the very beginning, you should realize that the competition format might, might not necessarily teach you how to write good, clean code. Uh, if you want to write good, clean code, write your own project, take your own time, uh, ask people to review your code. That's a better approach. This competition is really about trying to win, and to win you have to write sometimes some really nasty, messy code. Um, some final suggestions I have is go ahead and check online. There's uh, an UVA online judge, which is the exact same judge system that they use at the competition. From here, you could go ahead and submit any uh, and all solutions you want. The online judge acts the exact same way that the professional judge does. Don't forget that there's a fantastic book called Programming Challenges uh, from an author called Skina and then also Revila. It's on Amazon. I'll link it in the video. Uh, this is probably one of the most helpful books I've ever had to teach me about competitive programming. Again, this book is not at all helpful if you do have a very good background in algorithms. Uh, and finally, if you want, I wrote a pretty long detailed article about tips and tricks for the competition format on the Penn State Robotics Club wiki. Uh, if you're interested in the competition format and you go to the Pennsylvania State University, send me an email. I'm jbryden at cores2.com. Uh, or if you have any questions or are stuck on a specific problem, uh, I would highly recommend you go to the online judges forum. It's probably one of the uh, most active forums on the web talking about uh, these online problems. So this is Jeremy Bryden, hoping that you've had a good experience with ACM and you will be looking into these kind of problems. Thanks.